four common FAFSA mistakes that can cost you a lot of money. Hi everyone, I'm Tina Steele, the FAFSA guru. And if you like what I have to say in this video, be sure to subscribe by hitting the link below. I see these mistakes time and time again, and unfortunately making them can cost you thousands of dollars in financial aid. So let's go through them. Mistake number one, listing your marital status incorrectly. If you're a dependent student filling out the form with your parents' information, and your parents are currently divorced or separated or going through the process, you only need to list one parent's information on the FAFSA form. And this would be the parent with whom you resided with most the last year. If you resided with both of your parents the same amount of time, then you would use the parent whom provided more than half of your support this last year. If you're an independent student filling out the form and you're currently divorced or separated from your spouse, then you only need to report your income on the FAFSA. This is a crucial mistake that so many students and parents make. If you're currently divorced or separated and you file a joint tax return with your spouse, then it's going to be very important you do not use the IRS data retrieval tool when filling out the FAFSA form and you want to manually enter your income information only. Using the FAFSA IRS data retrieval tool will pull up your joint tax return you filed and incorrectly report that information. Mistake number two, failure to report unborn children. If you're an independent student filling out the FAFSA and you are expecting a child within the current award year that you're filling out the FAFSA for, then you count that unborn child in your household. If you're a dependent student and your parent is expecting a child in the current award year, then you would also report that unborn child. This can make a really big difference in terms of financial aid as your expected family contribution is based on family size. Mistake number three, Reporting your retirement and home value as assets on the FAFSA. Those are two assets that are protected that you do not have to report. The only real estate you would include on the FAFSA would be a home other than what you lived in with your family. So if you have rental properties, et cetera, and it doesn't matter what type of retirement account you have, you do not have to report it. I've seen so many families count this information as assets, which really inflates the expected family contribution and can cost you financial aid. And mistake number four, adding an extra zero accidentally. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that. Families that have called me because their expected family contribution is so high, and in doing a little research and looking at their FAFSA, realizing that they added an extra zero to their savings account, to their taxes, to any assets or investments they have reported on the form. Adding that extra zero can make several hundred dollars look like several thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So be careful when you're filling in those amounts. So there you have it, four common FAFSA mistakes that can cost you a lot of financial aid. And if you already filled out your FAFSA, I highly encourage you to log back in and double check that you did not make mistakes in those areas. Thanks so much for watching everyone and for more tips and tricks on the financial aid process and what you can do to maximize those financial aid offers, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And for parents of upcoming high school seniors, be sure to check out my Financial Aid Academy that opens August 1st of this year. The Financial Aid Academy will take you step by step through the overwhelming senior year financial aid process, ensure that you stay on track, meet all your deadlines, and help you get the best financial aid offers possible. There are three levels of service in this program to meet whatever your specific needs are as a family. And a couple of them include working closely with me throughout the entire senior year to answer any and all financial aid questions you might have. But those spots are limited. To learn more, go to my website, thefafsaguru.com, and click on the Financial Aid Academy at the top of the page. I hope to see you there.